worship and magnify you today. We thank you, God, for your presence. Lord, you're so good and so faithful. We will. 
worship you, Lord. Hallelujah.
God. Oh, Father, you're good. You're good. We praise and honor you, Jesus. We magnify your name, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, God is good. Amen. Uh, if I can have Will and Heather, if you guys would come up, and, and Chad and Adrian, if you guys would come up, and Miss Deborah, if you would come down, praise God. Uh, I just had it, about the middle of this week, I just had it laid on my heart to, uh, to lay hands on them and to, to agree, these are our, our uh, pastors, youth pastors, children's pastors, music pastor, and... Um, and so stretch out your hands towards them. And Will and Heather are getting ready to go into, well, this has already been a busy time, but this weekend is the Ignition Conference and uh, a lot of things coming together to make that happen. You being, you know, part of that, but uh, they're the heads of this thing. And, and uh, so let's, let's, we just want to lay hands on them pray for them, continued grace, continued strength for them in Jesus' name. <clears throat> and Father God, we lay hands on Will and Heather right now for supernatural strength from heaven and wisdom from heaven. And Lord, great grace upon them, continued grace upon them as they go into this ignition but Lord beyond we just speak upon their ministry and upon their impact on our young people we just thank you for great grace that's just what I heard in my I was back in my office this morning just praying about this because I knew I was going to pray and lay hands on on you guys and great grace just great grace greater than you've known. We thank you for great grace upon them. And we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. God's so good. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Chad and Adrian are our children's pastors, they're our children's directors, and so um, I just want to pray, just lay hands on you guys, and, and um, for great grace, continued grace, I mean, you guys are going to find out, and we're all going to find out next week at the, the manhood graduation, but such powerful things through manhood, but, and with our, with our children and our kids, we so appreciate what you guys do. And so as a church, let's just uh, stretch our hands out towards them. We thank you, Father, for great grace upon them. Lord, we know your grace is upon them. Your hand is upon them. Uh, but, Father God, we thank you for great grace and greater grace that's upon them. I thank you for the anointing of God to minister to these kids from the babies on up to 12 years old. I thank you for great grace upon them. Supernatural wisdom supernatural strength from heaven upon them as they minister we thank you for it thank you Lord thank you for great grace great grace greater grace amen this is what I hear on the inside of me and uh, Miss Deborah she leads our worship and uh, You know, these different areas, we're just believing God for these different, just to go to the next level, to go to the next level. And uh, they are, they are, every area. And you know this, I'll just say this for the church, just before we lay hands on Miss Deborah, but as the church continues to grow and we continue to develop, these areas entail more. And you know, as uh, pastors of our church these 
I mean, we need your prayers, but but our children's pastors, our youth pastors, our music pastors, they need your prayers. Amen? And so hook up. And Amen. Amen. So just, just hook up with everyone. We just thank God for his goodness. And so we're laying hands on Ms. Deborah right now for great grace. Yes. Great grace. Yes, yes. In every area, I thank you. Thank you. Every area coming up, every area coming up, and we thank you for it. Yes. Great grace and greater grace. Anointing upon her as she and the praise team lead our church in worship. Lord, we thank you for your anointing. We thank you, and we don't belittle any area. We thank you for your anointing and great grace in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes, supernatural healing. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. And Lord, we just speak supernatural strength right now. Upon Miss Deborah. Supernatural strength right now. In Jesus' name. We give you thanks. And we give you praise for it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You know, just stay with me. But uh, as we grow and as we as we develop as a church, you know, we're all in this together. Amen. In your prayers for Will and Heather, for for uh, Chad and Adrian, and for Miss Deborah, and your prayers are coveted. Amen. And we're in this thing together, step by step. Amen. God's so good to us and so faithful. So, you know, let's just thank God right now. I, I'm so thankful for our pastoral staff. Amen. I'm so thankful nobody's bucking for, like, you know, well, I want to be seen. I want to be this. I want to be that. Nobody's, nobody even thinks that way. Amen. Everybody wants to do what God's called them to do and to fulfill what God's called them to do. Amen. And I'm so thankful. I'm so, it's not that way everywhere. You know, um, it, those of you that have been in other churches or whatever, you know, it's not that way everywhere. And so thank God. So Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We give you thanks. Lord, you, you've blessed us with the best and we thank you for it. And we praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God's good. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome this morning to Midwest Believers Church. We are glad that you're here today. If you are a first-time guest and you did not stop by the Welcome Center on your way in here today, please do so at the end of the service. We have a free gift for you. We want you to know that we are glad that you're here that you are welcome here, praise God, and so I just want to bless you with a little something, and um, welcome to those joining us on Facebook Live, we're glad that you're tuning in today, praise the Lord, um, a lot going on right now, praise God, we've got some pretty exciting things coming up, Ignition Conference is next Saturday, so if you, um, sixth graders through 12th grade, um, if you know any students that age, please let them know. We want them to come. We're expecting around 100 students, maybe a little bit more. It's going to be powerful, and it's going to be fun for them. It's a good mix of fun with worship, with the word, with the anointing. And we fully expect kids to be set free during these services. We have bathed these things in prayer and just expecting God to move mightily. And so we're excited about that. And so with that being said, today is the last day that we're collecting um, the gift cards for giveaways, candy. We've been the last month or two advertising back there things that we're collecting. We like to do giveaways for the students. And so um, hopefully you brought those today. If you forgot and still want to give towards it, and um, you can just mark your offering envelope today, Ignition Conference and we'll make sure uh, we go get that stuff uh, for the conference. And then also there's going to be a brief 
volunteer meeting following the service today. Are you doing it here in the sanctuary? In the youth room. So if you volunteer to help next week at the Ignition Conference, go back to the youth room at the end of the service, and Will and Heather will be meeting with you there. And then also if you can stick around from 1230 to 3-ish or 330, they're going to start doing some setup for that. And so I think you're, you're going to order in pizzas or something, so you can even eat lunch here. They'll order in some pizzas, and so if you can stick around and help them do some setup, they've got to sort a lot of things and start getting games set up, different things. Um, that would be a blessing as well. And then um, also we're going to be doing a baptismal service on Sunday, April 3rd. So if you need, want to be baptized or one of your kids, let us know. There's a sign-up sheet out there, and uh, we'll get them on the list for that, get you all the information that you need. And then also we have a form out there, a paper out there that lists all the events coming up. We've got so much coming up. We've got our RAMA Ministerial Association meeting. That's where we host um, ministers from around Illinois, Indiana to come and to be ministered to for a couple days. We serve them a couple meals. And so we need some volunteers to help serve those meals. If you're interested in helping with that, that's April 7th and 8th. And then that Sunday, April 10th, Reverend Craig Hagan will be ministering here uh, in the Sunday morning service. And so you'll be blessed with that. And then uh, Pastor Nancy Dufresne will be coming. We are super stoked about that as well. And um, she will be here April 24th and 25th uh, for Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night. And then also Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagan will be coming to do a Living Faith Crusade here um, let's see, May 4th, 5th, and 6th. And so it's an honor to be able to have them come and minister. And they're excited about it. We're excited about it. So it's going to be good. So save the date for that. We have a paper out there that has all of the uh, dates on there. You can take it home with you. And be praying for those services because we're expecting God to move mightily. And so also wanted to give a quick little testimony. We had our uh, Thursday single moms group uh, this past week, and we had two moms give their hearts to the Lord. So praise God. It's so worth it. Amen. We're able to minister to them and encourage them, and so we're excited about that. God's good. Somebody say the Lord is good. Lord is good. Hallelujah. If you need an offering envelope, slip your hand up in the air, and the ushers will get that to you. We are so thrilled with what God is doing. And uh, the caliber of ministry that he's sending our way. And I know I, I said this probably a couple weeks ago, but God must love you. Because there are a lot of people, there are a lot of people that would, would like to have uh, these ministers come. And they travel and go to different places, but they're coming here. Amen. 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 And he loves you because he's sending you his best. Amen. These aren't, these aren't like no name people. These are high caliber people. These are, uh, you know, great people in the kingdom of God. And so they're coming to minister to you. And so thank God for that. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, with, with, uh, pastor and Mrs. Hagen coming to do that, uh, you know, they, they oversee over 280 Bible schools around the world. That's not 280 students. That's 280 Bible schools around the world. And so praise God, there's, there's the Rhema Bible School that Ron and I went to and, and Ms. Deborah went to and other, other people. I shouldn't have even started naming names. But anyway, <laughs> other people have gone to, but they're in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, just outside of Tulsa. But um, at that time, there were probably four five maybe Ramas, and that was in the mid mid 90s early 90s i'm gonna quit talking about titles names and dates and anyway just quit that whole thing but anyway because i think about how long it's been but <laughs> but um in the last 20 30 years i mean just amazing increase around the world such a hunger for god and so to have the leaders of of that to come and to minister to our church family and there are several pastors I was talking to a pastor just the other day and he said I was telling him about different things coming up 
that we have going on. He goes, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be seeing a lot of you. He goes, because he goes, we'll be there. And I think for, for every one of the meetings that we have coming up, and including the Ignition Conference, and they're bringing some, some students over. And so praise God that we can be a part and minister to other people as well as be ministered to. Amen. And be a blessing. So praise God. Well, are you ready to give this morning? Let's, let's give. Father, we thank you and praise you for the opportunity to give, to sow into the kingdom of God. Lord, you're so good and you're so faithful. And we just declare uh, the blessing of God upon each and every person that is in this room. And Lord, we declare uh, the increase of God in their finances. And Lord, we keep our eyes on you, keep our focus on you as we take care of your house, you take care of our house. And we give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.
Hallelujah. We thank you. Lord, we thank you that we're living in the overflow. Oh, we thank you, Lord. you've been so good to us so faithful hallelujah hallelujah we'll turn to somebody and say isn't he faithful praise the Lord thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you amen you know we've been talking to the praise team about going to the next level. Amen. Amen. And how many of you know it's going to the next level? Yeah. Amen. But we're not stopping here. No. Amen. We're going higher. Yeah. Hallelujah. Greater things. Greater things. Then even we know, even than we've seen, greater things are in front of us. Amen. Yeah. Somebody say greater things. Greater. Now, turn with me to Psalm 23. We were here last week after Britton and Andy, Andy shared uh, their testimony. Wasn't that good last week? Can you enjoy that? You know what I love about that is that it was interesting because uh, they did the word and had the, had the outcome. Amen. You know the the blessing and the increase doesn't the the blessing doesn't come to just the hearer, right. but it's the doer of the word. Amen. 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 Not just the hearer, and so I really appreciate that. Amen. And and a, a lot of that I didn't know. Rhonda goes, "Well, I knew." I'm like, "Well, I didn't." <laughs> so she knew, but I didn't. And so, uh, but praise God for that. That was a that was a really a blessing. Amen. Amen. Love to love to hear that. And uh, so this scripture here, uh, you know, many times this is read at, at funerals, but really this is a life-giving scripture. Yes, this isn't a funeral that we look back and go, well, we, we really like. No, this is a life-giving scripture. This is a scripture for us to stand on. Yes. Uh, and so uh, this scripture, I just want to spend a few minutes here this morning. And <clears throat> we're getting ready to, we've been talking about prospering God's way. 
uh, prospering God's way, and uh, we're working towards it, and we'll get to it here in just a little bit, but we're going to talk about tithing. Somebody say tithing. tithing. Tithing gives us access to some things, and so we're going to talk about that. But the reason we uh, are talking about that, it's incumbent upon us, or it's our responsibility to give the, the, whole, the full gospel or the, the whole counsel of the word of God. Yes. And so this is one area, and there's blessings of the tither, amen, amen. in the word of God. And if we don't ever talk about it, then sometimes then people won't hear about it. And they won't walk in those blessings that they could have walked in. Yes. And we'll stand before God one day and he'll say, you didn't talk about that. Well, you should have. And, and you could have. And they could have. And they missed this because they heard about tithing. And so we want, we want to, we want to uh, talk about that for just a few minutes. Because it is extremely important. Yes. Amen. Amen. And just to say this, to get the, you know, we're not receiving an offer, another offering at the end of this, you know, at the end of this message. And besides that, I don't see who, who is tithing and who's not tithing. That is between you and the Lord. Amen. 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 And so when we talk about this, I can talk about this without, oh, well, I wonder if they're thinking that preacher's just like everybody else. He just wants everybody's money. Well, I don't know what you do. What you do is between you and the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so, and so um, I'm preaching this not because, of, uh, not because of some ulterior motive, but because it's in the Word of God. That's right. And this will uh, save us. We're going to see here in just a few minutes, but we're working towards that. And so I just wanted to preface this entire message, just in case I forget later on to preface <laughs> it. I thought about it. I thought, I better say something right now. Amen. And so, uh, but we're talking about the goodness of God and how the Lord wants you blessed. And so I want to look at this Psalm 23. It begins by saying, the Lord is my shepherd. Aren't you glad that he's your shepherd? Yes. Amen. Um, I shall not want or I shall not be in want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. You know, if we'll let him, he'll lead us and he'll guide us. Yes. If, we'll, if we'll let him... He'll lead us and he'll guide us. Amen. We can do our own thing and then come back and when things aren't working out, we can blame it on the Lord, which many, many people do, or we can let him lead us and guide us and he'll direct our steps. Yes. He'll direct our way because he's that good and he's that faithful. The Lord, the, this scripture starts out, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Another translation says, I shall not be in want. Another translation says, I shall not lack. The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. Amen. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside uh, the still waters. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. You know, I I just want to just want to take a a side journey for just a second here and talk about the soul. And let's say let's let's look at what that real what that is. Uh, we are a spirit. That's the person that got born again. When you accepted Jesus into your heart, the person that got born again is your spirit. Amen. The real you on the inside. So you are a spirit. You possess or you have a soul. Which the soul is made up of the mind, the will, and the emotions. And you know, mind can be all over the place. Uh, Emotions can be all over the place and usually are all over the place because of circumstances. But we can possess our soul. Yes. No, that is not you. Mm-hmm. The, the real you is on the inside, the spirit person, the spirit man. Amen. 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 On the inside. And so you have a, have a soul and you live in a body. Yes. Amen. But you are a spirit. You are a spirit. So when this says, he restores my soul, anybody ever gone through something that you needed your soul restored? Oh, man. We've been through, I've been through some things. I'm like, Lord, help me. Help me. Help me. I I need some restoration right now in my soul because my my emotions were all over the place. My thoughts were going here and going there, and I needed help. I needed help. 
but he's a restorer. Yeah. Amen. I just want to say this. He's the restorer of uh, the soul that's been depressed. He's the restorer of the mind that's been depressed. You say, I can't see a way out. There's no way out. I've looked at it 10 different ways. There's no way out. He's the restorer of your soul. He's the restorer of your mind. Amen. If we'll put our trust in him, he restores our soul. He restores our soul. That means when everything around you is not happy, you can be happy because your soul's been restored. Amen. You can have joy. Because your soul has been restored. Why are you so happy? I'm just, praise God, happy. My soul's been restored. My soul's been restored. It was once broken. It was once hurting. It was once discouraged. But now it's been restored. Because the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I used to be my shepherd. I used to, well, I'll just do what I want to do. I'll just do what, fine, do what you want to do and do without the blessing of God on your life and the, the hand of God in your life. But when he's your shepherd, he's a good shepherd. Amen. And he's restoring souls. Praise God. You say, well, I've been broken. My heart's been broken. Okay. That's it. Your heart's been broken. Now let God restore it. Yes. Let God restore it. Time. Somebody say time heals all wounds. That's a lie. That's a lie. Uh, time just gets deeper bitterness. Just grows deeper bitterness. Because I know for myself, the more I think about a situation, the bigger it gets. And the deeper the root of bitterness goes. So time doesn't heal all wounds. Jesus does. Amen. Jesus does. He heals all wounds. Somebody say all wounds. All wounds, even the deep ones that nobody else knows about. Yes. Amen. The ones that, the ones that been trying to keep quiet about. The ones that keep it on the inside. Well, I just keep it on the inside. I just keep it on the inside. No, we better let the Lord have it. Yes. Amen. Not, not letting people have it. Your husband doesn't want it. Amen. Your kids don't want it. So don't let them have it. Let Jesus have it and say, Lord, I thank you for restoring my soul. It was broken. But it's being restored. It was broken, but it's being restored because you're my shepherd. You're my shepherd. <clears throat> Listen to this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of death, verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. I love that. I just want to preface this message on tithing. How does this go together with this? Because he wants you blessed. Yes, he does. Amen. Amen. Whenever he thinks about you, he doesn't think about just you making it, making it, scraping by. I mean, he deals with every part of your life. Yes. He deals with the lack. The first thing that David said here was, I shall not lack because yes. he's my shepherd. Yes. He deals with every part. He deals with, he restores my soul. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. He deals with every part of our lives. Yes. Amen. He wants you blessed and he wants you increasing. Yes. Praise God. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Amen. Isn't that awesome that you can go through life? Even if there's a shadow of death all around you, you can go through life with joy. Amen. You can go through life without fear. Amen. I mean, without fear. You, we can go through life. Lord, I'm trusting you. Gas prices go higher. Okay, I'm trusting you. Amen. I'm trusting you. I don't remember where I talked about that this morning, but gas prices going high. Yeah, I'm trusting the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah, here's where, here's where it was. Thou preparest, verse five, verse 5, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Even if things are all around looking bad, he prepares a table. What does that table mean? What is that table type of? It's a type of provision. He's prepared provision for you. Even when things around are looking bad. Yeah. And people can complain, well, it's this person's fault. It's that person's fault. You know, it doesn't matter whose fault it is. The provision is the Lord's. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The provision, we always keep our eyes on the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Always keep our eyes on the Lord. Beware of 
getting off into a deep conversation about, well, it's this person's fault. Well, it's this ideal. It's that ideal. It's this. You can get so frustrated. I've gotten frustrated watching uh, threads of, on, on Facebook of people talking to each other. And um, I don't know if it's supposed to be encouragement. I'm not sure what it is, but people going back and forth at, at each other about situations. Well, it's this. Well, it's this. Well, you're this and you're that. You know what? My trust is not in that. That's right. My trust is not in the government. That's right. My trust is in the Lord. Yeah. He's, the, he's my good shepherd. Yes. He's my good shepherd. Yes. Amen. Amen. I don't agree with everything. It's just like you don't agree with everything that goes on. But we don't have to be frustrated by it. That's right. Amen. We don't have to be frustrated by it. We can understand that no matter who's in office, we trust the Lord. Amen. We trust the Lord. Amen. Amen. So no matter, you know, I just use this as an example because everybody's noticed. And <clears throat> it's been in conversation and stuff, I'm sure. But gas prices have gone up. Anybody notice? <laughs> Anybody notice what used to cost you $40 now costs you like 60 or 70 to fill your tank? And so all of a sudden gas prices have gone up and, and I, I caught myself the other day. I was thinking about it going down the road and I was thinking, actually, this, how, how is this going to work out? I mean, how's this all going to work out? This, I was listening to the radio and they were talking about inflation and all this stuff. And I thought, I was almost like starting to get into fear about that whole thing. I was like, man, oh man. But then I remember, the Lord's my shepherd. Amen. He's my provider. So no matter how high that thing goes up, I just quit kind of paying attention to it. Yes. You know, if somebody asked me, well, how much did you spend? I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Why? Because either way, I'm going to have to fill my tank. Right. That's right. That's right. And so I can either be frustrated while I'm doing it, or I can thank God and say, Lord, I thank you that you're my source. Yes. I thank you that you're my source. Every dollar that it takes to fill you know, I don't care if it goes, I don't want it to, but I don't care if it goes to $10 a gallon. I'm going to trust you because you're faithful. You're faithful. Amen? And so he prepares a table. He prepares provision. Even whenever in the presence of our enemies. I love that. That is so powerful. That even when it looks bad all around, there's provision. In the presence of, and it may be in the presence of, of thoughts. And the thought may be coming, you're not going to make it this time. You're not going to make it this time. Ooh, this is a big one. This is a big one. How are you going to, how are you going to make it? In the presence of that, there is a table of provision. Yes. In the presence, right in the middle of it. Right in the middle of it. Somebody said, well, how, how, how can you be happy? How can you be happy? Because my hope is not in whether the economy is up or down. My trust is not in that. I want it to be up, right? We want it to be up. We want things to be moving in the right direction. But my hope and my trust is not there. And so if it's not, I'm going to stay happy because the joy of the Lord is my strength, not the joy of the economy. Amen. Not the joy. And people will complain no matter if it's good or bad anyway. People are going to complain anyway. If you want to find something wrong, you can find something wrong. Amen. But our trust as children of God, as believers, our trust has to be in the Lord. Yes. Amen. 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 He's faithful. Yes. And so you go back to this and he prepares. Yes. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. That's why you don't need to, you know, you can have good memories, but don't look back and, and longingly at the good old days. Because right, yeah. he didn't prepare a table behind you. He prepares a table before you. Amen. 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 He didn't prepare a table back there. Amen. Oh, well, that's the good old days. That's the good old days. Oh, man. And longingly looking back and say, oh, that was, that was the great old days. No, his provision is before you. Amen. 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 The best is yet to come. Amen. The best is yet to come. Yes, so, so stir up your soul and say, uh, say, soul, you're going to be renewed. Yes. Because me, the real me on the inside, the real me on the inside is looking to the Lord. 
and he's my source, and he's the one I trust in. And so this is going to be renewed. Fear, you're out the door. Faith, you're in. Amen. 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 And we have to do that. But we can't just do it on a Sunday morning. We have to do it all the time. I mean, that has to be how we live. You know, we have to live that way. So and I'm, I'm not saying that fear doesn't try to come. And I'm not saying that discouragement doesn't try to come. What are we going to do with the fear when it comes? Are we going to let it into us by thinking on it? Uh, one, one scripture says, take no thought, saying. How do we take a thought? By making it ours and saying it. Amen. Amen. So, so what do we do with the, the fearful thought that comes? What do we do with uh, the discouragement that comes? What do we do? We, we all of a sudden have to turn our eyes, turn our hearts toward Jesus. How do we do that? Lord, I thank you that you're my source. Yes. I thank you that you're faithful. I thank you that you are good. And you've never let me down. You've never let me down. You're faithful. I trust you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And you know, we have to remind ourselves about, of that. I remember when we, were, uh, when we were first going through cancer stuff back in, um, I don't know what the year was, but I was 22. And uh, told me that I had cancer. And, and I, was, I was doing, I was kind of almost, almost oblivious, not, not oblivious to it, but almost like I felt like, I, knew, I just knew everything was going to be all right. So I didn't, like, have the attack of fear. Now, Rhonda dealt with the thoughts all the time. And we lived right around the corner. And to go anywhere, we had to pass a um, cemetery. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I was like, ah, it's not a funeral home. But a cemetery. And so every time we had to pass the cemetery, and every time she'd go by that, the thought would cross her mind, that's where your husband's going to be. That's where, that's where Trent's going to be. He's going to die. You know, the devil's a rotten fella. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, we don't say fella very often. But the devil's rotten. Yeah. Rotten to the core. Yeah. Rotten to the core. And he doesn't care. He's not playing nicey no. with anybody. No. Amen. The Bible says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. One translation says he only comes. Yeah. The only reason he comes is to do that. But Jesus said, but I am come. That you may have life and have it more abundantly. Man, he came to do some good things in your life. Praise God. And it, call, it, it, it comes up with me. Um, if, you'll, if you'll help me this morning, we're going to get through this. Amen. <clears throat> but you prepare a table in the presence of mine enemies. Uh, you anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness, shall, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Amen. Goodness and mercy. Yes. Instead of trouble, follow me. Well, just trouble seems to follow me everywhere I go. Drama seems to follow me everywhere I go. Instead of that, goodness and mercy. If we just switch who we're following, amen. Yeah. Switch over and decide, hey, you know what? I'm not following that lifestyle anymore. I'm following the Lord. Yeah. I'm following the Lord. And I'm following what he says. And so there's something else following me now. I'm following him. And he and goodness and mercy are following me. Yeah. Amen. Everywhere that I go. I mean, I turn around and go, oh, caught you guys, goodness. Caught you, goodness. Yeah. Caught you, mercy. You're right behind me. Yep, you're still behind me. Still behind me. Why? Because they're following. Yes. They're following us all the time. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Somebody, somebody say goodness. 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 And he says, uh, verse 4, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you're with me. Just, just go with me just for a second. Just knowing that he's with me yes. changes the way I look at things, yeah. changes the way I approach things. Mm -hmm. Uh. I remember, and I've used this example, but I don't, I don't have a lot of examples like this, so I go back to this one. Whenever I went to, the first time I went to Robinson Correctional Center, 
And I went in the door, and I thought, oh, this is, and I, I just give you a little backstory. I had announced it for three weeks, and nobody was responding um, to that we needed somebody to go down to Robinson Correctional Center to do this, um, you know, to, I, I really didn't know what to do. I just was announcing that to go down there, and so finally, I was a little bit frustrated. I was like, why isn't he? I'm a nice guy. Why isn't anybody responding to this at this point? And um, just in my heart, uh, the Lord said, because I need you to go. I was like, oh, okay. Well, I should have, you know, I should have been the first in line. Then I felt kind of bad about the whole thing. I was like, I should have said, I'm going. Anybody going with me? But I didn't. And so, um, anyway, the first service I went down there, I had, I had uh, called him and said, we're going to do the service. And then JR said, hey, you want me to go with you? I said, yeah, that'd be great. So we went down there, and JR was behind me, and we walked in. The first door was fine. The second door was fine. But when that third door shut behind me and locked behind me, we were like in the inner, what what'd they call that thing? The... I don't know, there were like, yeah, yeah, inner prison. But anyway, there were buildings all around us, and we were on the inside. And I looked over, and you remember me talking about the sign, <coughs> little signs about every 15 feet or something, said when shots are fired, sit down. And I thought when shots are fired, when shots are fired, I'm going to have to change my <laughs> pants. Is when, well, that's what's going to happen when shots are fired. And... Um, but having him with me changed everything for me because I'm a lover, not a fighter. And I'm like, let him do that. And so, <laughs> so if there was something go wrong, I knew JR was with me, right? And so, but just knowing that he's with me, yeah. just knowing that the Lord is with me yeah. changes everything. And really, it doesn't matter. In this scripture, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. It doesn't really matter what's all around. Uh, fear tries to come. But you don't have to give in to that. If our trust is in the Lord. If our faith is in the Lord. Amen. He's so good and so faithful. Amen. So good and so faithful. So I wanted to talk about that. Now, if you will, turn with me <coughs> to Malachi. Malachi, chapter 3. And we're going to talk about accessing, accessing that protection accessing, uh, how do we access that provision? How do we access that provision that's been placed before us? How do we access that? And when times are bad and when uh, hope's not, not really at the high point <clears throat> in society, how do we access his provision? Uh, one way, somebody say one way. One way is through tithing. Somebody say tithing. 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 Uh, <clears throat> now, just just want to say this before we get into the scripture, but tithing is 10% of your income. Tithing is uh, faith in action. Yes. Amen? Yes. Faith in action because my trust is in the Lord. So, Lord, I'm going to put you first. Yes. Uh, you know... Since I was a little kid, I've been a I've been a tither, and I mean, my mom, my mom and dad. If somebody gave me ten bucks for my birthday or something like that, they'd be like, "Hey, make sure you tithe and give an offering off that." I'm like, "Well, okay, okay. Well, you tithe with your money, which they did, but <clears throat> but they taught me from a young age to tithe, and it started with with a dollar, you know." And it started with that and with that. And now it's like I've been a tither for so long. I don't know what it's like, what it'd be like to not be a tither. You know? But we can walk in the protection and provision of God. Tithing 
is the faith action by which <clears throat> we bring 10% to Jesus, the high priest of the tithe. And so we bring it to, to him. Uh, tithing goes to where we are fed so that we can continue to be fed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so God uses that 10% to reinvest in our spiritual welfare and our benefit. And I love this. Tithing is the only place in the Bible where God says, prove me. Amen. Oh, come on now. Amen. Prove me. Just see that it's so. You just see that it's so. If you'll put me first where you're finding it, just see that I won't provide. Amen. Amen. We're talking about tapping into that provision. Amen. Um, And and you'll be glad to know that this church is a tithing church. Amen. Because she makes sure. She sees the numbers and she makes sure that 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 10% goes back out to ministries. Amen. Amen. Why? Because we believe in the tithe. Amen. We believe in the tithe. And so, um, and we've been tithers all of, our, all of our married life. And she's been a tither since, well, I don't know. She might have just gotten saved when we got married. But anyway, no. <laughs> I'm just messing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in trouble. So, anyway, praise the Lord. But back to the scripture. It says this, bring you all the tithes. Into my storehouse, that there may be meat or provision in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord. Prove me now. He says, prove me. Herewith, saith the Lord. If I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke. I love this. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he will not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time. Uh, Now, there may be people in here that have, I don't know, flocks or herds or something, you know. But most people don't. I don't. And so, but where it's concerning, where it's concerning to you, he says the devil is rebuked for your sake. Amen. How do we access that? How do we get in and say, okay, wait a second, that's mine. How do I, how do I get in from, instead of being on the outside looking in, go, man, that protection looks really nice. It'd be like window shopping. You know what? God just doesn't want you to window shop with him. Amen. His, the promises that are in the word of God are for not you to look at and go, oh man, that's nice. That's really nice. And the devil follows that up with for someone else. Right, right. That'd be nice for someone else, but not for me. Because of my past and my history and all this stuff. Um, you know what? We already, we already said this. We don't, you don't live out of your past. The table of provision is before you, yes. not behind you. Yes. is before you. Yes. And you say, well, yeah, but this happened, this happened. Yeah, that's great. Be healed. Yeah. Amen. Yep. Let him restore your soul. Let him restore Hallelujah. your soul. Yes. You say, well, it's pretty bad. You don't even understand. And I may not understand, but God understands. Right. The restorer understands. Yes. Hallelujah. And he is restoring your soul. Man, I'll tell you what. Mm, I like that. Every time we go back, and I know we spent last Sunday, we spent a little bit, a few minutes on that, on that scripture, Psalm 23. But we may just do it again because it's so good every time. Every time we get into it, I'm just like, oh, man, I'm seeing more and realizing more how good God is. How faithful he is. Amen. Amen. But I love this where it says uh, here in verse, um, I believe it's 10. I believe it's still in 10. Uh, Verse 11. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Amen. Amen. So there's a, a story. Let me read. This guy is, uh, he's a pastor up in Michigan, I think, right? Anyway, pastor up in Michigan, Mark, Mark Barclay. Many, some of you guys may know him. But anyway, his son-in-law, or uh, his son-in-law was in the house, and his little boy, how, how old was the little boy? Three? 
He was a toddler age. Anyway, he, uh, the little boy had gotten into the pool and drowned in the pool. And that's not good. That's not good for anybody. And so anyway, the paramedics were there and, you know, the ambulance was there. And they were like, there's, there's no hope. He's, he's already gone. And so that was his little, his little boy, this minister's grandson. And so anyway, the dad came out and the paramedics were like, there's, we can't bring him back. And the dad started going, I'm a tither. I'm a tither. I demand my tithing rights. I'm a tither. The devil will not devour me. I'm a tither. Amen. Amen. And you know that little boy came back. Praise God. Praise God. When medical, when in the natural couldn't help. But this guy was a covenant person. He was a tither. And so he had something to stand on. And he just raised his hand. I'm a tither. I'm a tither. Man, praise God. That little boy's alive today. (coughs) Whenever he says... The devil will be rebuked for your sake. He means it. The devil's rebuked for your sake. You're a tither. Don't let the devil mess with you. Don't let the devil mess with your family. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm a tither. I'm a tither. I have rights. Somebody will say, I have a right. I have a right. You know, people, people will, for all kinds of things, say, I have a right to do this. I have a right to say that. You can't do this to me because I have a right. I have rights and privileges. Well, and Christians will lay down to the devil. Whenever he comes and tries to steal, kill, and destroy, no, no, no. I have a right. I have a right. I'm a tither. I'm in covenant with the Most High God. Amen. I'm in covenant with him. And so you will not steal from me. You will not steal from my kids. You will not steal from my spouse. No, you're not taken. You will not steal from my church. Amen. Amen. Because we're tithers. Yes. We're tithers. Yes. You're not, you know, there's, there's a Christianity of people that are religious that just go to church and show up on Sundays. And, but that's, you've taken it to a whole nother level. You, you're like, hey, wait, wait a second. I'm not a low level Christian. No, no, no. I'm not scraping the world. No, no, no. I'm a high level Christian. I'm a tither and I'm expecting great things from a great God. Amen. Hallelujah. My eyes are turned somewhere else. My eyes are turned uh, off of the situation. My eyes are turned on to him. And I'm a tither. So you can't devour me. You can't mess with me. Amen. Amen. Somebody say God's good. Oh, he's so good. Says I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord, and all nations shall call you blessed. For you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. You shall be a delightsome land. Amen. Amen. You're blessed. And you access the blessing of God. You access the provision of God through this one way that seems very natural. But we access the provision of God. Amen. You know, I can remember, um, maybe I'll just tell a couple more, couple more instances. But um, I can remember my brother and I were driving down uh, the, not, not the Broken Arrow Expressway, the Will Rogers Turnpike. We'd gone, we were going to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we were in St. Louis, and we were on Highway 44. And if you guys been, have been there, you go over the Will Rogers Turnpike. And, and one night, we were following my mom and dad. And um, as soon as we crossed over, I'm not sure why it's like this, but as soon as we crossed over the state line, it was like an ice storm. And they were having all kinds of trouble. And so we're cruising down the road, and my, my mom and dad, they were in... Uh, a front wheel drive car. And so they were fine. They were cruising down the road doing whatever speed they were doing. And we were in a rear wheel drive little uh, Pontiac 1000. If you've ever seen it's like a Chevette, you know. But anyway, <laughs> real, rear wheel 
drive. That's kind of hard to say. But anyway, we were in that car. And all of a sudden, we hit something, and we're on the ice, and we're trying to keep up with mom and dad. And all of a sudden, the car started going this way. And my brother, he corrected, overcorrected a little bit, and the front went that way. And he overcorrected, and then it went that way. And we're just doing this, going down the road. And all of a sudden, we start spinning down the road. And, and the first thought was, we're going to die. This is ridiculous. You know, because every time we'd come around, you could see the tractor trailer lights behind us. I thought, how are they going to stop? You know? And we had a ditch on one side and a, a median on the other side. And I was just like, we're going to hit something. This is, this is not good. But... We just started yelling out, Jesus, Jesus. And uh, my, one of us started yelling, Jesus. The other one said, started yelling, angels. He says, well, you, Jesus is more spiritual. I think I yelled, Jesus. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure I yelled, Jesus. And you said, angels. And I'm like, well, anyway, so I'm not sure who said what, but whatever it was, we ended up not getting hit. We ended up not going off the side of the ditch this way, and it was like 15 feet down or what. You know, it was just a big, big ditch and some, some fields over there, and we didn't even hit the center median. We didn't do any of that. Uh, the Lord protected us. Amen. And, you know, I go back and I think about it now. I was a tither since I was a little kid. And I was kind of forced to be a tither. That was really mean of my parents. Mom and dad, you, no, that was one of the best things that they ever did to me, right? And, uh, but I was a tither. My brother was a tither. And man, I'll tell you what, we could have lost our lives then. But God, Amen. but God, he says, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. Amen. 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 You know, the devil's been trying to, when you really think about it, the devil's been trying to steal and kill and destroy in every one of our lives. And I think about it. I, I think about how he's tried to, tried to steal from us where cancer's concerned and stuff like that. He's tried to steal my life, tried to steal uh, our marriage. And, you know, in 2016, I just, they found a, they found a little uh, tumor, and the doctor was really concerned about it. I was concerned about it. And that time, I had fear, like thoughts of fear. I was in a battle, like, like I didn't realize what she had gone through, but I understood whenever it, whenever it came to that. And, man, I'll tell you what, God brought us through. Amen. God brought us through that thing. And what looked really bad he even had the doctor a little bit freaked out. You know, it looked really bad. And he actually said that to me. He's a good doctor. Good doctor. And um, we actually saw him on his way out. We actually saw him on his way out. He was getting ready to retire. But good doctor for many years. And he was shook up about it. So it was not good. But God brought us through. God brought us through that thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's been so good to us. Amen. He's been so good to us. I mean, whenever I say us, I mean us. God's been so good to us. Been so faithful to us. And I believe the things that we can think of and go, oh, yeah, I remember when God did that. I remember God would do that. But there's so much more that we don't even know about. He's been so good. Things that... We'll get to heaven and look back, and he'll say, did this, did this, did this. And we'll go, oh, well, that was the Lord. I should have paid attention to that. And, man, that was so, yeah, that was good. So that was, that was you. That was you. That was you. That was you. And we see the goodness of God. How could a God that is so good not want you to prosper in any area of your life? How could a God... That is so full of love, not want you to prosper. That's right. Amen. And so you tithe and you honor God and you worship God with the tithe. Yes. Amen. Mm -mm -mm. I'm not sure what this message was this morning, but praise God, it was good. I'm encouraged myself. I don't know if you got encouraged, but I, I got encouraged this morning. 
I'm so glad that I came to service this morning. Amen. 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 I hope you are too. God is so good. God is so good. Well, Father God, we just thank you. Stand with me this morning. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. Lord, you've been so faithful. And we trust you. With, With all of our hearts, we trust you. Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done and everything that you're doing. Lord, you prepare a table before us. And so we look to you, our provision and our source. We turn our eyes off of the circumstance onto you because you are faithful. And we give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Father. And we'll be, we are reminded of the rewards of the tither. We walk in provision. We walk in protection. Because of your promise. And we give you thanks. And we give you praise for it. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. With every head bowed and eyes closed. If you say this, you say, um. I need to make Jesus the Lord of my life. I need to make Jesus the Lord of my life. I need to give my heart to the Lord. Or maybe you say this, I've accepted Christ, but I've not been in fellowship with Him, and I need to renew my fellowship with the Lord. If that's you on either one of those, I just want you to slip up your hand. Or maybe you're out on Facebook and you're watching. Today is the day. Somebody say today. Today Today is the day. I want to pray this prayer. Say this. Say, Heavenly Father, I come before you right now. I thank you that you loved me so much that you sent Jesus, your son, to die on the cross to pay the price for my sin I believe Jesus went to the cross for me I believe that Jesus went to hell for me I accept Jesus into my heart I make him the Lord of my life in Jesus name Amen Amen Praise God. Praise God. If you can be seated. I want to make this other call. If Altar care team, if you go ahead and come on up. If you say, uh, I've never been filled with the Holy Spirit. Being filled with the Holy Spirit and receiving my prayer language was the best thing that happened to me. Amen. And uh, there's no believer that has to go through their life without being filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, if you have a question about that or if you want to pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit, the altar care, come up at the end of the service after we close and sing. And uh, They have a, a booklet, little booklet for you, and uh, they'll pray with you. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you and praise you for everything that you're doing in our lives, everything that you've done. Lord, you've been so good to us and so faithful. And we thank you and praise you. Lord, we just declare the blessing of the Lord upon each and every person that is in this room. We declare the blessing of the Lord upon the kids in the back. We declare the blessing of the Lord upon each person in this church we thank you that you are increasing that you are strengthening that you are the God who's more than enough and Lord as we trust you we receive of your strength and of your goodness in Jesus name Amen Amen. would you stand with us this morning we're going to sing this song one time through and then you can be dismissed hallelujah